Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we are going to talk about using colors and emotions in your music making. So of course, these are things that we will all work on for our entire lives and never come to the exact solutions. We'll always be searching. However, I think there are certain things that anybody at any stage in their studies can do to take their playing to the next level and to maximize the expression of their playing. So the first thing is that you must visualize what it is that you're playing. You must imagine the story, the image, the color and the sound, you know, so that you have everything within your mind and in your heart before you even come to the instrument. This is the mistake that a lot of people make is they sit down with the instrument first and they try to make something happen using what they know about their technique. But this is not a direct, natural, organic uh, correlation to the music and the meaning of the music because we're starting from the point of the cello. But instead, start from the music and start from the feeling, the emotion. And then the cello and the bow, is, they're simply tools to express what we want to say. So once you have that image really, really clearly in your mind, then I find it's incredibly helpful just to release everything in your body and let those emotions, those powerful colors and expressions to take part in your body, to live there and just release your arms and let those colors and emotions do the work. You see, often we are thinking, well, I have to do this to get this on. I have to do this to get... And of course, we have to think about all these things and understand the mechanics of the instrument. However, in the end, often the most effective thing is just to let the music do the work for you and to release your muscles and allow that music and those colors to flow through you, then the bow becomes like a paintbrush. You know, it's just this tool on the canvas to do exactly what you imagine and what you desire the music to be like. Okay, so I hope those ideas help. The last thing I will say is that oftentimes as performers, we don't do enough of everything. You see, Sometimes we worry about whether something is in good taste or not. And therefore, we kind of scale everything back a little bit. And we don't go right up to the edge of the extreme. We don't push the boundaries, you see. And although it might seem like enough in this little circle around us when we are playing, to the person in the back of the concert hall, or these days to the person on the other end of the Zoom call, or whatever it might be, to them, it's not gonna to be too much at all. You know, it might even seem extremely subtle to them. So, usually I find we must exaggerate the expression. In the soft passages, we must go even softer, dare to go softer, and in the loud passages, dare to go more, you know. So, I find if we take the passage that we were working on and we we've discussed knowing the emotion knowing the story what you want to say now take that expression and do 10 times more than what you would have originally done and then from there once you've achieved that 10 times more then you can scale it back you know and decide what is appropriate but the ability to go to the edge of the extreme that is really essential. And that's what makes classical music so exciting and so alive and wonderful, you see. So I really encourage you all to explore these things in your work and in your playing. Um, they're incredibly rewarding. And these are the things that make music what it is, you see. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope these ideas help you all out a little bit, and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.